Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back. So yesterday I made a newbie guide, basically talking about every single Nat 4 in the game and what they can be used for and how they might be good. Um, this video, I'm going to be talking about all the Nat 5s in the game, um, just talk a little bit about them. And I don't think Nat 5s in this game are too hard to get. Most people actually do have one or two Nat 5s if they participated in the Heroes Festival or if they did any summoning while they're a low level. Most low level players do at least have one or two Nat 5s. So I'm going to be talking about all the Nat 5s, just a very, very brief overview of what they can be used for, why they're good, or maybe why they're not. So we're going to start with the Persephone. And we're going to go from the bottom up, all, bottom all the way up. And we're going to start with the Persephone. So this is the Fire Persephone. This is her max stats. Um, she is a balance type. I think sh her stat distribution is is decent. Um, she actually has pretty high attack because she is a Nat Five. You know, if you can't really compare the same amount of attack as um, Nat Four, even attacker types like a balance type Nat Five usually might even have as high attack as some attacker Nat Fours. Um, so. Stat-wise, she's actually pretty nice. You don't really need to build her with any sort of um, attack or anything because she is a sapper. Both her skills provide sap. Now, she is the most reliable sapper in the game because she has a 100% chance to sap on her second skill, 60% chance to sap with two on her first skill. So both her chances are really, really high. Um, so, yeah, she's just the, the best sapper in the game, but she can only provide sap. So what this means is sap is really only used for early game. You don't really need it at all late game. Um, obviously, uh, it d depends on how you define late game because like really, really late game, like everyone's nuking through everything. So it doesn't really matter. Um, sap, sap doesn't actually make things too fast. But the really good thing about sap is I think it's really, really nice early game because you can use sappers if you happen to have her. You don't even need to evolve her or anything or you could evolve her um, for... Well, actually, no, it, it might be a waste of resources because um, you might have another Nat 5 that you may maybe want to get to Evil 2. She can work well at, as Evil 1 um, if you... If you... Um, even if you don't max her, like this is still all right. It can it can farm most of the Starstone dungeons. It can farm golems. Um, B nine might be a little bit hard, but I think I think you can do it. If you go like two slot HP, one one slot defense, she should be tanky enough in order to survive. So it shouldn't be too bad. You you really don't even need to evolve her. You can just basically level her up and just use her early game to help you sap through things. And then eventually, you know, maybe in the future, somewhere down the road, you pull Water Persephone and she can become food for her or something like that. Moving on, this is the Water Persephone. Water Persephone is the, um, I guess best all-round monster in the game. She really can be used for anything, and she's a very, very reliable healer. She is the best passive healer in the game because she heals for 10% of her HP. And there's actually another monster that heals for 10%, but she has higher HP pool, so that makes her slightly better. And she has a really nice second skill with Petrify, 80% chance. Um, her animation is also really slow, so this basically always lands after everybody else uses their nuke. And that's actually really good because... It basically, if you petrify someone first, they actually take less damage. But if you petrify someone after all your damage dealers already went, this is the equivalent of a stun. So it's it's just as good. And stat-wise, she's actually really good. She is a balance type. I mean, for her skill set, you would it would be ideal if she was like HP type, but that would make her way too OP. Um, I do like how she actually has a little bit of attack, and um, her defense is not too high, but I, I like how she has has a little bit of attack as well. So she can basically, if you the way you want to build her is basically just full HP, but you can still get a little bit of attack um, if you have some like attack percent substats. It can actually bring her attack a little bit, like a little bit higher, and she can do a, a bit of damage, you know, um, and not just stand there healing all the time. She can do a little bit bit of damage while she is healing every single turn. So that's actually pretty nice. So this is the Wood Persephone. She has 100% sap on first skill and attack down on second skill. Now this actually is pretty nice for um, for Titans because 100% attack down and you can actually use her early early on for sapping purposes basically. Attack down is also really useful because you can use this on bosses, on monsters. They It makes them do less damage to you. And the other good thing is her stat isn't isn't too bad. Um, I wouldn't really recommend you know evolving her or anything. 
Unless you maybe you have a water one that you want to maybe eventually feed her in the future. I don't know, maybe you pull like two Persephone, you just pull the water, you pull the fire. Um, or you pull the water in a wood. And then you already gleamed up the water one to evil two. Then you can maybe gleam this one and you can just use her temporarily. And then eventually she's going to be going into your your water one as well for, for the evil three. Um, she's not too good beyond early game, but she is still very, very nice early game. She also has better stats than the than the fire one um, at five stars. Wait, 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 no, no, she doesn't. Oh, I, uh, that was my mistake. I actually clicked the evil two. I think they're about the same amount of stats. It shouldn't be too different. Um, but she is also a pretty good sapper with her first skill. Basically, a hundred percent chance to land two, two one turn saps. So that's that's really reliable. Okay, so this is the Light Persephone. She is probably one of the strongest, like, most um, coveted Nat 5s in the game. Because she has a unique skill that can boost um, team's morale by 20%. That's actually really, really strong. No other monster has a morale boost, like a team morale boost that's this high. She's the only one that has it. Actually, no. My, my mistake. Um, the Dark Bell Rona has, it, has one as well. Um, and she has Shock on her second skill, and Shock is very, very strong in PvP. She's a very nice um, PvP monster that you can use on offense, and you, you can also use her on defense as well because she's also really tanky. So, um, and you can also use her to, to speed run because she, her base attack isn't too bad, and because most of her stat distribution went into these three stats, not much of it went to recovery. So that's also really nice. So she has excellent stat distribution. She has like the sickest skills she's light type um and that's it like there's there's nothing else to say about it she's she's just the perfect monster um the dark one now this one is probably the strongest um nuker in the game basically like she strongest aoe nuker because there are stronger single target nukers like Dark Atito or something but uh she is the strongest aoe nuker in the game she has morale boost and predator Predator basically increases her attack damage by 40%, so she's going to be hitting very, very hard. She's also dark type, so she has a nice 100% um, base crit damage, and she has like 3,800 base attack, so that's like insanely high. Like she, she will just hit so damn hard, and just when she gets this AOE off, everything's dead. All right, that's just how it works. And yeah, I can't really say too much stat wise. Like she has a nice. Um, bit of HP and defense as well, as well as like really, really high attack. None of it was wasted in recovery, so also a very, very strong Nat 5 um, if you can, if you're lucky enough to get her. Moving on to the Arthurs. Now, the Arthurs are actually all really, really strong. The Fire one has a 100% chance to stun and 60% chance to defense break. Now, he's an attacker type, but he has um, pretty balanced stats, I think. But it's a little bit unfortunate that some of it into, went into recovery, so it's not it's not too good, but it's still very very nice. Um, he's a very strong attack attacker monster. A lot of pe people use him on PvP defense, um, set him as the hidden, you know, dirty Arthur hiders, and yeah, you can actually use him in, in offense as well, like early on, um, in, in earlier stages because he can stun and. He can also be used for Tower of Chaos. He's also very good for that because he, he also has a 100% stun and bosses in Tower of Chaos are not immune to stun. So you can actually stun the bosses and it can it can allow you to cheese through a lot of floors in Tower of Chaos. So it's definitely really, really nice to have early on. Um, he's definitely one of the better monsters to just straight out like gleam and get to evil 2 early and just use him because um, he can be pretty much be used for everything. Like, he can be used for farming, PvP, tower, um, like, you know, uh, arena, uh, offense, defense, doesn't doesn't really matter. You can use them for anything. The water one's also a very unique monster. He has a 50% morale boost. This is actually really, really high. And he also has attack down for, for three turns. The good thing about the water Arthur is he gets his AoE up really, really fast. At least by the third turn, he's going to have his AoE up. And um, he can basically spam his nuke afterwards. So the good thing about him is he's going to be able to provide SP for your entire team. Your entire team is going to be able to pretty much get their full bars by the fourth turn. So um, that makes him 
pretty pretty useful depending on your team. So I think this guy is very very situational. It depends on what other units you're running on your team. But he's still a very very excellent monster. He's balance type. His um, max out stats are actually pretty good. Relatively tanky, um, decent amount of attack and defense as well. So you can build him. You can build him full tank. You can build him hybrid, like half attack. You can build him any way you want, really. Like he just he he works pretty well. Um, depending on what you want him for. Like if you want him f just just for farming, you can build him like straight out glass cannon. That would work as well. The Wood Arthur. Now this guy. Um, I think this guy's alright. He's a really nice self-sustaining monster and he's wood. If you have him early on, he can be used for farming um, B7 because B7 is water and he's wood. And self-sustaining monsters are, are really strong to help carry your team early on because all you really need to do is give him the best gems and he will solo like 90% of everything for you. So, um, you know, as long as you can make sure he's tanking him to survive the hits and do enough damage for this HP Siphon to heal him back. He's going to be able to heal for quite a lot. He also has an AoE two-turn stun, so that this is actually pretty nice for, for Arena or, or PvP as well. Um, I don't think he's too good for PvE besides like farming early on, just to carry your, your team early on. His stats is also really nice because he's also an attacker, 3,700. Um, 2,800 to 2,400, 200 extra went into recovery, but it's not, it's not too bad. It's still pretty good. Um, his stat is still really, really nice. Most of the Nat fives have really good um, stats, so you don't, you don't really need to worry too much about their stat distribution. Now the Light Arthur is really strong. He has shock for for his first skill, but thirst on his second skill isn't all that useful. It's still pretty useful for arena because thirst can basically make it so they can't use their second skill um, but he is an attacker type so most of the time you're only going to use him for arena offense and since his shock only lasts for one turn it basically is like the equivalent of a stun it doesn't even matter if it if they reduce their defense you know because um, by next turn the shock is already going to wear off so it's not going to matter but he does, if you use him on offense, you can actually go attack someone, shock him first, and then it's going to reduce their defense, and then you can go in with your nukers and attack. So he can actually serve as like a 100% armor breaker on offense, um, even if it only lasts for one turn. And it can also CC as well. So you can use him very, very situationally, because you could have another armor breaker to one-shot someone, and then some really threatening monster comes up. You don't have enough damage to kill it, and you just go in with your light Arthur, you shock it, and then it basically gets stunned for a turn. You know, so lots of lots and lots of uh, versatil versatility. The Dark Arthur is a tank and, and an HP aggressor, so basically more HP equals more damage. He also has sap, 100% um, chance for three turn three turns of sap. I think he's also very very strong early game, but he does fall off because his second skill is kind of not really useful. Um, but early game, he's going to be a very, very nice sapper because you can build him 100% defense. And on his 3-star skill, he's going to do... Or 100% HP. Um, and on his 3-star skill, he's going to do quite a, quite a bit of damage. And when he uses his 5-star skill, he's going to be sapping the like the enemy for 3, three turns of... Th one, 3 one turn sap, which is like 15%, you know, instantly by the time they move again. So that's pretty good. That's actually not bad. Okay, moving on to the Valks. The Valks have uh, the Fire Valks ha has HP, SP siphon and stun. This basically is kind of like morale boost, but it's dependent on the amount of damage you do. If you build her mostly attack, it actually will um, give you more SP than than if you ha use morale boost. So SP siphon I do think is the superior skill. She also has an 80% one turn stun. Um, I would say she's not as as strong as the other two Valks, but she's still pretty good to have. Um, stat wise she's alright I don't I think too much of it would really went to recovery she doesn't have the best stat distribution like this is probably one of the worst um, stat distribution for a nat 5 but her skills is alright like her skills is also alright she's not definitely not one of the stronger nat 5s but not as weak as some of the others so um, you know I can kinda understand if they made her an attacker with really high attack how this would be really really OP so they kind of balanced her out a bit by giving her shitty stats. 
Okay, the Water Valk is a very, very good nuker. Um, she's strong early game, she's strong late game, she's strong all around. You can use her to nuke everything. You can pretty much every, everything besides wood. If you really want her to, you can use her to nuke wood as well. Um, and she has high attack. Uh, you know, stat-wise, most of it went into attack, so that's already pretty decent. She also has Predator on her 3-star her skill, so she doesn't even need, need crit because this isn't, isn't Hunter. So as long as you have some attack on her, um, you know, you're going to do a lot of damage. Even if you don't have too much attack on her, you can actually rely on this Predator to do some damage as well. The other good thing is she has a 100% AoE 2-turn armor break on her second skill, which is super good. Like, this is, this is priceless, alright? Um... Really, really excellent monster. Like one of the one of the best Nat fives in the game, definitely. This is the Wood Valk. Uh, she is just basically a healer. She has adrenaline heal for for twenty percent of her own HP every single turn, and her five star skill, her AOE skill, heals for ten percent. So against four enemies, that heals for forty percent of her max HP on all allies. Now, stat wise, she's also really good because she's balance type. Uh, meaning that not only can you build her tank, you can actually, if you need to, you can give her one slot attack. And she's going to be a relatively good DPS monster. And, um, you know, if you just want her to heal, you can stack full, a lot of HP on her. And then she's going to be able to heal a lot. She has really, really high survivability. And really annoying on, like, arena defense. Um, but early early game, if you happen to get her, she can carry you through a lot of stages. Golden Speed 7. B, yeah, she can do B... B9 as well, and she can do B10, so very, very good monster to, to have early on to help you solo stages. The Light Valk is also really strong, she's a very good nuker. Um, Stat-wise, I wouldn't say her stats is too good, because I think too much of it really went into recovery, um, but she does have a 100% stun and also Predator. Predator is useful on anyone, basically just more damage, you, there's nothing bad about this skill. 100% stun is also really nice, basically it's a it's a CC monster. Um, you can use her for you can use her for a lot of things. You can use her for like arena defense. You can use her for offense early on. Um, you can use her for dungeons as well because she can help you stun some stuff. And then when she gets her AOE off, um, it will do a lot of damage because of predator. And you can also use her for tower of chaos because the bosses, as I said before, are stunnable. So you can use it to cheese through some levels. So really, really nice. The Dark Valk is also a 100% stun monster, but she has silence on her second skill. Now, the Dark Valk actually has pretty good stat distribution. Um, she's a tank type, most of it is HP, so she, she's actually pretty hard to kill. I really don't see much use, use for her besides arena defense and maybe doing Tower of Chaos to CC and stuff, um, because this doesn't really work anywhere else. And she basically is just going to be a CC monster, like a really annoying um, thing to have in arena defense. You know, just just there with a hundred percent stun to annoy the living shit out of you. That's 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 kind of her job. Um, so it's kind of between the water and the. W it's it's actually, I would say like water and wood and light are probably the stronger Valks. The fire nightmare. Um, now, the fire nightmare is one of the more reliable armor breakers in the game. She has an eighty percent chance to armor break. She also has thirst which is, I guess it's okay in PvP, um, it's, it also is workable, or it's usable against the golems now. Um, stat wise, this is also really good, she has lots of HP, lots of attack, um, not too much of it went to recovery. She does, doesn't have too much defense though, but you can basically build her like mostly as an attacker, and that's kind of her job, you know, to do damage. She's, in a, she's a utility attacker, basically. The Water Nightmare is one of the most annoying monsters to 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 like go against in PvP and also to have um, for the enemy because she has a three turn seal. I don't know how this is balanced. No de other debuff in the game has a hundred percent chance to activate and last for three turns. Like no other monster has this. Like this is just OP. Like I I really really think she's OP, but I, I do have one. Um, I use her for arena sometimes. It's just. She's really broken. Like this, is, this is pretty strong for arena. But th then again, I did mention that seal is only really useful in PvP. Um, she can also serve as a healer for her adrenaline skill. This is kind of like the Wood Valk's second skill. It's the exact same skill, so she can heal for forty percent of her max HP as well. She's a defender type, so she doesn't have too much HP, but she's pretty tanky because of the you know really high 
um, base defense. Not too much of her stats went into recovery. She does have a decent amount of attack as well. So she's going to be doing a little bit of damage, especially if they're bringing like some fire units against you and you use her on defense. Um, it's not too bad. Her, her damage isn't going to be too bad. And she also, yeah, she just has a seal, like a really annoying seal. One of the best um, PvP monsters in the game. Okay, so the wood one is another morale booster. Um, she has morale boost on her fir first skill. And her second skill is the exact same as the water nightmare. So what she is, is she's just a active, um, like an active passive healer, basically. She's going to keep morale boosting, spam her second skill, heal everyone, and rinse and repeat, really. Um, I think stat-wise, she's also really nice. She has a lot of defense, a uh, decent amount of attack and HP. Not too much of it went into recovery, although I would really like the 300 recovery to go into, like, I don't know, attack or something. Still be pretty good. Um... But yeah, they, they basically balanced her out a little bit by not having her HP be too high, so she won't be able to heal that much. Um, but she's still going to be pretty tanky, pretty annoying, and morale boost is also, you know, morale boost is always nice. Okay, this this is probably one of the worst light dark nat fives. Um, you know, she has aggression and sap. This is kind of similar to the dark Arthur, but the problem with her is, uh, like, you know, after problem with her and the Dark Arthur is they kind of fall off after early game. It's kind of wasted that they have an aggression on one of their skills, but their second skill is like a really, really shitty sap. Um, you can basically build her early on to use as a sapper, and then she really has no other use in the game. Now, I wouldn't feed away any light dark nat fives. They might like buff them in the future or something like that. They do buff a lot of monsters, so that it could be very possible that they buff some monsters in the future. Um... But, yeah, I think after early game, she's really not all that useful. You can basically build her up, level her. Um, you don't even need to evolve her just to use as a sapper. Build her full full defense and just use her for, for sapping early game. Okay, the Dark Nightmare is one of the... Yeah, one of the stronger dark monsters in the game. She has a 40% morale boost on her first skill and a 80% chance to do a 3-turn sap on her AoE. Or, not sap, uh, seal on her AoE. So she's actually really annoying on defense, um, she's tanky, she morale boosts so she can get her bar up and if she can get it up she can land this and if this lands then your team is pretty fucked because your whole entire team, well not whole entire team but like multiple units on your team might be sealed or at least um, one unit on your team could be sealed you know so pretty, pretty threatening monster I think um, she's also yeah just good stats, good skills Nothing else to say, really. Okay, the Shiva. Now, you'll see this adrenaline skill on a lot of Nat 5s. She bas he basically has the same skill as the um, Wood Valk, you know, Water Nightmare, Wood Nightmare. And he has a 100% chance to stun. Now, this is very similar to uses like the Fire Arthur and stuff early game. You can actually just use him to cheese through some TLC stages. Um, He's also quite nice to have on an arena defense because he's really annoying. Um, because a lot of offense teams don't build that much, um, that much resist, so you can actually stun them if you have 100% stun. It's pretty reliable, and the, the heal is also really nice for early game if you really don't have any healers because um, you know these passive active heals are are really nice. They basically make it so you can nuke at the same time to get more blue souls while healing your team. So that's that's pretty pretty good. Um, Stat-wise, he's mostly tanky. I, I don't think these stats are um, are too great, but they're still they're they're all right. They're not they're not too bad if you just mainly just use him as a tank slash healer. Um, kind of can kind of wish his HP was higher, but if they made it higher, the skill would be too OP. So I guess it's pretty fair. Okay, the water Shiva is like is like shit. Like I don't know why his activation rate is so low on his skills. Like, this is only 80% chance to, for two turns of sap, and he has Thirst on his first skill, which isn't all that useful because because Thirst isn't all that useful. Um, Stat-wise, he's alright. Like, this is a pretty good stats for a tank, um, to be honest, but his skills are just too shitty. I, I think he's one of the... I think he might be the worst Nat 5 in the game. Um, the Wood Shiva is actually a really, really strong Wood Nuker. 
A lot of people don't really build him because his 5 star skill seal, like this activation rate is really really low. But he actually has really really high um, base attack. And his uh, HP and recovery aren't, aren't too, or HP and defense aren't too bad. So this with his high base attack means he can actually hit quite hard. Um, but there aren't that many uses for wood nukers in the game. So like currently there aren't that many uses for wood nukers in the game. So he does, um, like there, there are better monsters to use as nukers. Like maybe if you have some, you know, event monsters, dark nukers, or if you have a water valk. Uh, for nuking like neutral elements, she actually might be better because she has a better uh, better second skill than than he does. But stat wise, he's 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 pretty nice. Okay, Light Shiva. This is the fusion monster. Um, he has Battle Rush. Only a few monsters in the game have this. Basically, is adrenaline plus morale boost, and he has a HP aggression on his second skill. So basically, high HP uh, means that he's going to be able to heal a lot. Um, heal himself a lot, and then he's going to be able to boost his own SP so he can spam his second skill for damage. He actually hits quite hard um, if you can get this skill up, if you can get his HP high. His base HP is insanely high as well, so you know, he does a he does a shit ton of damage. His stat is just really, really nice. I think he's probably um, the best Shiva, and he's also fusible, so if you have some Shivas, definitely put in the work to fuse one, and you'll you'll be glad you did. So the Dark One is a sealer, 80% chance for 2 turns. This is pretty low, not really reliable, but he does have a 100% stun on his second skill for 1 turn, so... I guess he's an alright CC monster, but 100% stun, or AoE stun is really only useful in, um, in like, arena and stuff. So he really has, has no use outside of arena. Stat-wise, he's actually pretty nice. He has high HP, high defense. Um, just a good dark tank, and... Nice seal. So maybe if you're facing a lot of light monsters, you can just if you if you have them, you can bring him in as a dark tank, and um, he can seal some of those those monsters. And when he gets his AOE up, he can stun and provide CC for your team. I don't even know if you can get the Shivas to be perfectly honest. Okay, the Fire Odin is one of the strongest um, PVP monsters, or or strongest, yeah, one of the strongest PvP monsters in the game for offense and defense because of the 80% armor break and 80% attack down. Stat-wise, she's also tank, so meaning that she's going to be pretty tanky. Her defense is also very high for HP-based monsters as well, so um, distribution is really nice. Um, she's going to be really tanky if you build her properly. And she has high activation um, on both her skills. She's basically like a fire version of a better version of a wood leo. And she also has a 40 to 45% lead if you can get her as a leader for, for Astromon League. So very, very strong PvP monster. She's not only good for PvP, you can use her for Titans because these two debuffs are very useful in Titans. You can use her for any dungeons because these two debuffs are useful everywhere. So she's just a really good monster. I think one of the most, um, most reliable Nat 5s in the game. All right, this is the Water Odin. She's a she's a balance type. She's basically just really, really um, CC heavy. She just stuns on her first skill, stuns on her second skill, and she has pretty high attack, pretty high defense. Not bad on her HP as well. Recovery is a little bit too high. I think it's a little bit wasted that it went went into recovery instead of the, these stats going into her HP or something like that. But um, definitely not too bad. I, I think I think she's all right, but. I mean, like, the fire one's probably better, or something like that, so... Um, there are a lot of monsters with 100% stun that have better utility. Like the Fire Arthur, for example, and better stat distribution. I think it's just the stat distribution that really crippled her. Because if, if um, you know, say, like, 500 of this went into 5,000 HP, extra HP, she would be really strong, because her her stats would all be really, really high. Like, she, she would just be a really strong high stat monster. It's just that, sadly... Um, too much of it went into recovery. I think she might have the highest recovery in all the Nat 5s. She might. I, I'm not too sure, so don't quote me. Okay. Wood Odin's a really nice attacker. Really nice self-sustaining attacker. Um, she has really high attack, if you look at her, her stats. She has very, very good attack. And, um... She has HP Siphon and Armor Break. Armor Break is really useful. This is just really reliable. 80% is, is pretty high. 
Um, and she has HP Siphon, which basically heals her when she does damage. So if you have her early on, you can use her to help you farm B7. She's also a very nice self-sustaining monster for B9. Um, you can use her for B10 as well because she can sustain herself, which is... Like, self-sustaining monsters early game actually do help you quite a lot because you don't need the best gems on her on them as long as they're tanky enough to survive and do enough damage to heal back up to full. Um, they're going to be good monsters. So she's, she's really useful. Um, she's also one of the contract monsters. Really, really strong. Really good. Okay, so this is a sapper and adrenaline monster. I think she's really good early game um, because she, you can basically build her as your sapper, and she can also serve as a as an active healer for your your team. That can also attack the enemy and get more blue souls and heal more. So she's really really good um, for early game. I think I I just really think that sap on first skill is much better on sec second skill than for most sap type monsters. Um, obviously, Sap does fall off afterwards, so it's not all that useful. Stat-wise, she's also really good. I don't, th I don't think you even need to level her too much. Yeah, just build her full tank like this. She can basically survive through most of everything. It's not, it's not too bad. Okay, now Dark Odin is like one of the strongest um, light dark nat fives in the game. Battle Rush, as you might know, is really strong. Defense break is also really strong, um, and stat-wise, she's also really good because she has high HP, high attack, high defense. None of it went into recovery, so perfect, perfect stat distribution, perfect skills, perfect monster. Okay, moving on to the Indras. Now the Indras, um, sh he has. The Fire One has Elemental Edge. This basically is a more of a unique skill. You didn't see this before. It basically works on all monsters. Like basically it means that he can attack all monsters and it would be like if he had elemental advantage against that monster. So about like 50% extra attack. Um, obviously this won't work on water monsters. It has no effect on water monsters because he already has elemental advantage. But Elemental Edge makes most nukers very versatile because you can use them for any sta any stage that you want. As long as they're tanky enough to survive the damage, um, you can even use him to nuke like nuke water stages because of the Elemental Edge. He has a 70% seal. This isn't too high, but most people really just use him for his first skill for the Elemental Edge as an attacker. And if you use him for like Arena Offense or something like that, most people are going to be dead before he gets his seal off. Obviously, you still want to spam this in Arena to try to seal people. It's um, seal is pretty deadly on a lot of a lot of people. You can also use him as a nuker for PV PVE for a lot of stages, mainly because of the Elemental Edge because it works everywhere. So um, you can use him to nuke anything. So he's he's a he's a really good attack monster. The Water Indra is one of the best um, monsters for clan battle because he has attack down. As I, as I said before, attack down is really useful in clan battles. He also has Courageous Strike, and this is basically a skill made just for clan battles. It, it makes him do a lot of damage to the clan battle boss. So he is a balanced type monster. You can build him hybrid. You can build him. Um, I think most people that use him for clan battles might build him like HP, defense, attack. You know the usual build. Um, and stat wise, he's not too bad. I think too much of it really went into recovery, but his uh, his skills kind of make up for it. His skills is really good. Like he's a perfect monster for for clan battles. So really, really nice to have. Okay, so this is the Wood Indra. Um, he's a hundred percent stun monster as well, and he also has thirst. Thirst, as, as I stated before, is not too strong, but the hundred percent stun does make him quite nice to to use early on to help you. Um, stun stages, maybe use them for PvP offense, also, you know, for TOC and stuff. He kind of does fall off late game, not too good. Um, he's pretty tanky, I think. Um, Stat-wise, he's also pretty good, but it's just the, the thirst is a little bit useless. Um, he might still be pretty good for arena defense, though. Like, because he's tanky, you can build him, um, build him full tank. And then he's, he's just going to be really annoying. He's going to keep stunning. And they can't kill him because he's really tanky. So they kind of have to leave him there. And then he's going to try to try to stun. And then maybe he'll eventually stun someone. And kind of cost them a turn. And possibly win you the game. It, it doesn't... Um, I can't really... I can't really tell what would happen. But, you know, even stun is not too reliable on, on, a, on defense higher up. So... Kind of falls off late game, in, in my opinion. The, the Wood Indra. 
Okay, Lightendra, this is probably also one of the, sh the strongest light, light dark nat fives in the game. Elemental Edge and Hunter. Um, he's like the fire one, but like stronger. Like he has better stats. Like 3,900 attack as an attacker. That's like insane. Um, he has Elemental Edge, meaning that he has Elemental Advantage against everyone. And this doesn't work against... Uh, against it doesn't work against Dark, so it doesn't matter because it it basically already works against Dark. So he basically nukes for extra damage against all the other elements, and he also has Hunter, which is a bonus to his uh, critical hit damage. And then all light monsters come with 20% extra crit, so this also scales really well with just his base stats. And Hunter is just one of the strongest nuker skills you can have in the game. High damage with Hunter is just insane. All right. Okay, so this is the Dark Indra. The Dark Indra is, um, I would say, probably one of the best, if not the best, clan battle monster. He basically has Courageous Strike on both his skills. He has pretty high attack as well, um, but relatively tanky, you know. Not too much of it went, went into recovery. He has a decent amount of HP and defense, and he just has Courageous Strike on both his skills. And Courageous Strike basically means it does high damage to high HP um, targets which is what the clan battle boss is. So, yeah, he's pretty good. He's just really, really good for clan battles. Um, just He just does a lot of damage to, to clan battle monsters. And the other good thing is that he's dark, so he, ha he gets that 100% extra crit damage. And uh, dark monsters are element neutral against all the other elements, so he can be used against any of the um, titans that you want to use him on. So just a really good monster as well. Okay, so this is the Fire Garuda, 100% chance to seal, 70% chance to stun. This is like slightly weaker than the Water Nightmare, um, but he does have a stun on his second skill. And he's a defender type with uh, relatively high HP, so he's he's pretty tanky actually. He's, he's actually pretty nice to have on, on arena defense. And I think early on, you basically if you want to take him on offense, you can use him to, for his seal. But his stun doesn't really do too much because it only has a 70% chance, so it's not too reliable. Um, I would recommend raising the other Garudas. He really has no... Like, because Seal, you, you can't really use early game. Like, it's not really useful. You can't use this in dungeons and stuff, so he's mostly for PvP. But once you focus on PvP, you're already at the late game. And there are a lot better alternatives to use um, for late game. So he's definitely not the best. Okay, Water Garuda, I think, is one of the stronger Water Nukers. Um, he has an 80% defense down on his, on his first skill and Elemental Edge on his second skill. I think he's one of the only monsters that have an AoE Elemental Edge. So, he's a really good nuker. Like, if you can get his AoE up, um, this will do a lot of damage to everyone. And since it has Elemental Edge, it will just do like 50% extra damage as if everyone had elemental disadvantage. The good thing is that you can even use this to nuke wood monsters as well. So he's he's really good. Um, stat wise, he's also really nice. He has high HP, high defense, um, or high attack and high defense. And he's mostly an attacker. So really good, uh, really good water nuker. Okay, so this is the Wood Garuda. Um, he has Adrenaline and Courageous Strike. Now, Adre Adrenaline is useful, re really good early on, because you can use him to like solo B7 and stuff. And Courageous Strike will, won't do too much to the B7 boss, but it'll add like maybe, I don't know, like 3% extra damage. Just a little bit of extra damage. So it's always alright. You don't really use him for his second skill early on. Um, but later on, he's also a really good clan battle monster because he has Courageous Strike. And you basically you just build them somewhat tanky. You can build them hybrid as well. You can build them like you know HP attack defense, and he will be able to do quite a lot of damage against the clan battle boss, and also survive a little bit longer because of his first skill. If he doesn't get his second skill up, he can heal a bit with his you know sustain a bit with his first skill. So he's not too bad. This is the. Um, Light Garuda, he has a 80% shock for two turns and also Predator. Now this is insanely strong, like this is crazy crazy strong, like these two skills are really really good. Um, and stat wise he's also really really nice, um, you know, average HP, average defense, but like pretty high attack. Not too much of it went into recovery and he has shock, like a 80% two, two turn shock. 
with like Predator, which basically just gets him even more damage on his AOE. So he's gonna be he's a really strong nuker, um, really strong CC slash armor break slash utility slash nuke. You know, just he he's everything. Um, this is the Dark Garuda. He has Elemental Edge and Blind. Now, Blind only really works against Clan Battle monsters, but Elemental Edge is also quite nice for for Clan Battle because it's at, as if he has like the element advantage against all the all the Clan Battle monsters or all the Clan Battle bosses, and um, he's also a Balance type, which is really nice for for um, for being a utility slash damage monster. He has pretty nice attack for being a balance type monster. He's Most of his stat distribution actually went into attack. So he's going to be hitting pretty hard as well as providing utility for your team. So just uh, mostly used for clan battle. You can also use him for arena early on. You don't really need to use the blind. You can just use his you know, 3 star skill to, to um, basically just make him a nuker. Okay, these are the Siegfrieds. These are the monsters you can get from doing clan battles. Now, the Fire One has one of the highest base attack. I think the highest base attack in the game, 4k. And he has a 30% morale boost and elemental edge. Oh, wait, I forgot. He's the other monster that has an AoE elemental edge. Now, I think this guy is probably the best farmer in the game because you can use him to farm anything because of his elemental edge. And also with morale boost, you can... Um, you can he can boost his SP to farm faster. So he just uses morale boost, build him like mostly attack or full attack, and you can just use him to to farm anything. Basically, he's really squishy because all his stat distribution went into attack, but that makes him really nice. Um, really, really excellent monster for farming and nuking and pretty much anything that needs high damage. He's 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 the go-to monster. Now this guy is uh, is basically the same as a, a wood Garuda, but he's he's water. He's the water element. His most of his stat distribution actually went into attack, so that's actually pretty nice. He's going to be able to do a little bit more attack, um, but you know you don't want the HP and defense to be too low either. So these it's nice that his stat is pretty his stat distribution on um, creative strike monsters are actually you know pretty balanced. It's actually not too bad. And with adrenaline, the more HP he has, the more he heals. So that's also not that's also not bad. Um, he's just a good he's just a good clan battle monster. That's all I can say. This is uh, the, the wood one. The wood one has sixty percent defense down for three turns. So this is actually pretty high, and it also has a, a eighty percent chance to stun um, for one turn. So he's basically like a armor breaker. You can use him for. You can use him for pretty much anything. For he's actually pretty good at, on PvP defense, to be honest. If you can get one to Evil Three, because he's really tanky, and if he lands armor break on someone, that guy's dead. Like three turns, you're 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 fucked. Um, but 60 is not too reliable. It's not too high. But anyways, it's still pretty nice. Um, the defense down, and then if you can get an AOE stun off and stun someone, you know maybe stun one or two units, that can actually um, win you the fight in an arena defense. So that's actually pretty good. This is a double creative strike monster again. I don't think the light and dark Siegfrieds are av available in the game yet. He's a balanced distribute. His um, stat is is balance type. Um, his di distribution is pretty balanced, but the problem is I think a little bit of it, a little bit too much went into recovery. It would be nice if the recovery went into HP. Um, but you know, it's it's they can't have everything, or else they'd be like crazy crazy OP. But he's light type, he has a uh, courageous strike on both his skills, so he's stronger against the, the dark boss. But um, since he's light type, you can also use him against any of the other other elements for for nuking um, the titan, so he's pretty good. Okay, this guy is actually insanely strong. He's a defense aggressor on both his skills, and he has 38... Um, 3800 base defense, like that is crazy high. He has high attack... High HP as well. Doesn't matter his, about his attack too much um, because he is an aggressor. So as long as he has high HP, he has high damage. And yeah, he's just insanely strong. Like if you can if you can get one and um, build it with lots of defense, it's gonna be crazy, crazy good. He's also dark type, so like he has that hundred percent extra crit damage. So he's gonna hit like a truck. Be also really tanky and and yeah, just just a really really strong defense aggression monster.
Okay, this is the Belrona. She's only available from for Heroes Festival, but she's also most of her counterparts are really really good. Um, the Fire one is balance type. I think most of it went into attack and defense. I think mostly defense. So she's pretty tanky. Does a bit of attack, not too bad. Just HP siphon, which basically heals herself um, based on the amount of damage dealt. So it doesn't even matter that she has a low HP pool, it's actually better that she has a high defense pool. It makes her really, really nice for um, survival. If you happen to have one, she can actually help her to... Or she can actually help you to do like B9 or um, B8. Well, B anything can do B8. B8 is like too easy. She also has an Elemental Edge AoE skill. So this is really, really nice for... Um, for AoE nuking. Like, she's just a really good monster. Like, I, I really have nothing else to say. She's just really nice. Like, both these skills are really good. Um, yeah. Okay, Courageous Strike, Defense Down. Now, this is a Titan Titan's monster. Courageous Strike, she actually has pretty high attack for Courageous Strike. She's mo she, Yeah, she is an attacker type. But her since she's a nat 5, her HP and defense aren't too low. So, she's still going to be able to survive. And um, Defense Down is also very useful against the Titan. It's, it's use useful everywhere. So, um, you can use them as your... You can use her as your armor breaker slash water attacker, and you can also use her as like your titan's monster. So she she can do both those jobs pretty well. Um, like if you just use her as your attacker, it's not too bad because even if you ignore the courageous strike, um, she has pretty high she has pretty high attack. You know, base attack for a water attacker. So she's pretty nice to use just as a normal water attacker. And um, in clan battles, she's it's where she really shines. Alright, this is the Wood Balrona. She's actually one of my most wanted monsters in the game. Like this, this is what I call perfect stat distribution on, on defense monsters. Like this is just crazy. Like high defense, high HP, high attack, no recovery. Not, not high attack, but like not too much attack, but still like whatever other stat is left over went into attack instead of recovery. And then um, she has a 50% chance to morale boost and a 60% chance to seal. This is really, really strong. She's basically another um, battery monster that can charge up your team's SP bar because once she's able to get her AoE up, she nukes and then she gets a lot of blue souls and then your team gets all their AoEs up. So really, really nice monster. Um, Seal is also very deadly in the arena. So just all around really, really nice. Um, but it's pretty, pretty impossible to get these. You can only get them during Heroes Festival. Okay, so this is the Light Bow Rona. She has a 100% ch chance to shock for one turn, and she has Elemental Edge. Now, this is insanely strong because um, if you use her on offense, the shock actually matters. On defense, you can actually just treat this as a stun, but Elemental Edge is really nice for all nukers. Like, Elemental Edge you can use on any on any element. Yeah, that, that, that was like, no shit. Um, <laughs> but still... You know, she's she's pretty good. Um, she's She is balance type, so she's mostly tanky. You can actually even use her on, on arena defense as well if you really want to. If you run like a full light defense. Because she can CC someone. Although, um, I don't know how fast her attack animation is. If it's really fast, then she might be able to land the shock and then have someone with a slow attack animation hit them afterwards. After they're shocked and their defense broken. But it, when she, once she gets her AoE up, I think she's going to do a lot of damage because of the elemental edge. Okay, Dark Balrona is one of the strongest monsters in the game. She has a team morale boost, like the Light Persephone, and she has Adrenaline, which basically heals. So she's like a stronger version of like the Light Succubus, and she has like really good stats as well, like really high um, HP. Most of it just w really just all went to HP. None of it went to recovery, um, and the secondary... The, like the second highest stat is defense so she's basically really tanky really annoying gonna be able to morale boost her whole team and then heal her team for a lot and this is insane because if you notice like all the other adrenaline monsters none of them are tank type they're all like defender type or something like that with like 27k base hp she has 48k base hp so she's gonna be healing for insane amounts um every single time that she gets it off so just really op one of the strongest monsters in the game i think one of the strongest, if not the strongest, monster in the game. Okay, this is the um, the the fire Sanzang. Um, he has or she she I keep calling it he because in journey 
And freaking journey, they 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 gender bent a freaking monk into into a waifu, but I I, I can't complain. I I I I still dig that. All right, I still dig that. Now she has adrenaline, which is very similar to the fire Persephone, but she slightly has she has slightly lower um lower base HP. I wouldn't say slightly. Actually, it's it's quite a lot. Um. But it's still nice that she's a passive healer, because this is actually very, very valuable. She also has seal, so seal is actually, like a two turn seal, 60%, actually I would say is is stronger than a one turn petrify in PvP. So she can actually do pretty well in arena defense, and she's also pretty tanky because she's a defender type with um, relatively high HP. Not too much of it went to attack, I think recovery, too much of it really went to recovery. So her stat distribution isn't too good. Um, but her skill set is very, very nice. Okay, this is the water one. Um, adrenaline. Well, she can restore 30% instead of 20. And then she has sap. I think you really just use her early on, because she can solo a lot of content, because she can survive, as well as dealing sap. And then sap can do a lot of damage to, like, bosses and stuff. This is a 2 2 turn sap for 70% chance. It is lower because her first skill is actually a higher percent because, you know, usually it's only 20, but it got increased to 30. So I can't complain too much about them making her second skill a little bit weaker. Um, she just solos shit, I think, early on. But you don't really need too many strong water monsters early on. It doesn't really matter all that much. I guess you can use for B7. Um, B8 doesn't even re require you to have strong, you know, healers or anything like that. You just nuke through B8. Um, you can use her to farm your like star stones and stuff early on. Probably don't really need to evolve her. Yeah, I think if you just keep her like this, build her like double defense, one slot HP, should, she sh should be able to survive pretty well. The wood one is a double attack down monster, um, mainly used for clan battles because attack down is really nice for clan battles and she has a 90% chance to attack down for two turns. So this is very, very reliable. The other thing is she's also really tanky. Um, she has nice HP pool, um, okay amount of defense. And she actually has pretty high attack for a, for a tank type monster. So pretty nice, you can build her hybrid, you can build her full tank for, for clan battles and that, that's kind of what she is used for, um, nothing else really. Just a nice monster to have just on the side for, for clan battles. Okay, this is another battle rush monster. Um, balance type, most of it went into HP. I think too much of it went into recovery. It's got battle rush and stun. Stun is only 70% chance. I don't think this is too good. Maybe because they, they thought that battle rush is really strong, they made this chance of the stun a little bit weaker. Um, I guess it's kind of fair, but her stat distribution is just horrendous. Like this is not, not, this is not good. <laughs> I don't even know if you can get these. You probably can't even get these monsters. HP Siphon and Hunter. So this guy is like, she's like a stronger version of like the Dark Sura with AOE. She basically restores um, her own HP whenever she attacks. So this is like a, you know, just a life stealing skill and this is um, you know hunter hunter on a dark monster is really strong so she's a she's actually a really strong nuker yeah she's a really strong nuker she's got 3800 I would still say the dark Persephone is like still better but um, if you can get her like with a square slot or something it would be insane like it would just be sick Actually, if you can, with better gems, she actually might hit harder, even with like 100 less attack, because Hunter gives 50% instead of the 40% from Predator, and um, yeah, just basically because it has an extra 10% damage. I don't think it works exactly like a 10%, because like crit damage actually has a higher, higher multipliers. It like multiplies the damage and then the the crit and then the extra crit damage. So, or the damage and then the extra crit damage, but um, you know if you can actually get him on like perfect gems with like full crit, then he actually had she actually has higher um, overall DPS than the Dark Persephone, I think. Possibly, don't quote me on that. I'm not too sure. I don't math. I only bro math. All right. 
Okay, this guy has Predator and Courageous Strike. Now, he's a very strong Fire Nuker because he has Predator on his 3rd skill. You know, most monsters that have Predator on your 3-star skill, doesn't even matter what your 5-star skill is, you are already a good Nuker. Um, the sad thing is his stat distribution is not too good because oh, I think 3400 is already pretty decent, to be honest. It would have been better if, like, less recovery, more attack, but, you know, that would be too OP. He also has Courageous Strike, so you can use him for clan clan battles um really nice i think it, you can even ignore this and just use them as a nuke or anywhere it would still work and then with predator it would still do a lot of damage against the clan battle bosses so he, he's just a nice um damage healer okay the water monkey king is like the it's like a water version of the firewall thing she base he basically has lifesteal on on both his skills uh, sp hp siphon basically just steals whatever he recovers whatever damage that he does um he's just, just gonna be constantly healing himself you can build him i mean since he's balanced type his base defense and hp aren't too low in certain situations you can actually build him full damage and he's just gonna be doing a lot of damage and always healing back up to full every single time that he attacks so pretty nice monster um definitely really good for it you can actually actually use him to solo a lot of things early on Okay, this guy's a double armor breaker for three turns. I think this guy's mostly used. Actually, you can use him as a nuker for anything because, you know, double armor break is just really nice utility. You can use him as a utility nuker. He has pretty decent stat distribution um, with higher HP and attack. He's an attacker. 3,400 is not too bad. And, um, yeah, he just has defense down on both his skills. You can use him anywhere. Like, the... These types of monsters with like attack down or defense down, you can use them anywhere, especially defense down. Defense down is usable on, on in more situations because you might not always need the attack down because you could, you know, maybe the stage is really easy, you just want to nuke faster, and defense down actually could help with that. Um, you know, it depends. Okay, this is the light monkey. He has an 80% chance to defense down for two turns and 80% chance for an AoE shock for one turn. Now this is actually very, very strong. Like both these skills are also are are excellent for PvP. Um, and he's also I think he's a tank type. Yeah, he's a tank type. Decent amount of defense. Um, pretty high attack for a tank. HP is like pretty high. I mean it's not it's not like super high, but it's still pretty high. I think mostly used for arena defense because he can actually land defense down and um, you know he just becomes really threatening if you if you leave him alone on arena defense. Um, yeah, really good monster as well. Just anything with defense down is probably pretty good. Okay, Dark Monkey is like is like shit. All right, he's he's so bad. He's got thirst and silence. Um, both these are not really useful debuffs. They're okay in, in, in PvP, um, and then he's he's also balance typed, and his stat distribution also isn't the best. Like this is both lower than 3,000, and a lot of it went into recovery. So bad stats, bad skills, shitty monster. That's all I can say. But anyways, that's pretty much it. That ends our that concludes our video of all the Nat fives in the game. Um, I think I'm gonna start doing maybe a video while I'm doing my daily videos of you know how to gem every single monster in the game you know slowly get those out and if you have any questions definitely do do ask me this is actually just a very very brief review of every single nat 5 in the game and hopefully you enjoyed this and I'll see you guys in the next video peace out